Hello, child of God. This is Pastor Ron again, coming to you with another message on higher wisdom. And to the subject of today's message is uh, speaking in other tongues. There's a uh, profound uh, information in the Scripture about speaking in other tongues. It seems to be one of the most uh, confused gifts of the Holy Spirit in the entire uh, Christendom. And I'd like to speak a little bit on that gift. Uh, there are three different manifestations of that gift, at, at least three. There may be more, but it's at least three shown in the Scriptures. Uh, first and foremost is a sign gift. The sign gift of speaking in other tongues is, is when the Lord, uh, in the second chapter of Acts, uh, when He poured out the Holy Spirit upon the, the, the 120 believers in the upper room, they manifested uh, the cloven tongues of fire, and when they manifested tongues, there were Jewish people from nations all around uh, Israel that could understand some of the speakers what they were saying, and they were glorifying God. Now, this is an example of the sign gift of tongues, and and the uh, sign gift is for the unbelievers to believe. The Old Testament, the the, the Lord said that He would speak to his people in stammering lips and they would not understand. And then there's the the uh, prayer gift. And we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where we're speaking on the prayer gift of tongues and then also the message gift of tongues. Now the message gift of tongues is when someone in the church stands up and speaks out a gift in uh, the uh, message in tongues. It is for the edifying of the church but it has to have an interpreter present before it can be, they can be edified. And I would like for you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we'll discuss these three manifestations and, and the confusion involved in, in these manifestations. Uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking precisely about tongues and prophecy, and we're going to kind of ignore prophecy at the time for, because we're on a time limit, but go the prophecy is included also in this. He says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, he is speaking, the man that is speaking is speaking from the spirit. And, and not from the speaker's understanding. He doesn't have the words that he's speaking out. The words are spoken to him by the Holy Spirit, and then he speaks them out, uh, spoken to him to his spirit, uh, and then he speaks them out. And they are mysterious, mysterious to his intellect. And it, the Scripture says that no man understands him. Uh, and these words are not addressed to man, but to God. Now, let me read it again, verse 2. For he speaketh in an unknown tongue, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Now, this is, this is a subject the Apostle Paul is going to be talking about over and over again in this, in this chapter. And the Apostle Paul, like, uh, like any teacher is going to say things three times, three different ways in order for us to comprehend or understand them. Verse 3, he said, uh, But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, therefore, God is speaking words to a human spirit that an intellect does not understand in order to bless us personally. But a prophet, the words that God gives a prophet to a prophet spirit when he speaks them out are going to bless the entire church. In verse 5 he says, I would that you spake with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesy than he, he that speaketh with tongues, except that he may interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now this this is a summary of what he's going to say in several several occasions in this uh, chapter. Uh, Paul wishes all to speak in tongues in the pro proper time and place. But in regards to speaking to the church, it should be in tongues with interpretation or prophecy, not just tongues. This is the time and place to build up the entire church, not the individual speaker. 
um, verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even things without uh, life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in, in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? If the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? So likewise, except ye by, uh, utter by the tongue words easily be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak unto the air. There are, there, there are, it may be, so many ki- kinds of voices in the world that none of them is without signification. Therefore, if, you, if I know the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian to me. Even so ye, for as much as you are zealous with spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. And this is Paul's point. Be zealous for the gifts. But in the church, be zealous to edify the church. Verse 12, again, Even so, for as much as ye are zealous for spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Paul wishes all to speak in tongues in the proper time and place, but in regards to speaking to the church, it should be tongues with the interpretation or prophecy, not just tongues. This this is the time and place to uh, build up or edify the entire church, not the individual speaker. That's the same point I made before. Verse 13, Wherefore let him speaketh in a nung tongue, tongue, pray that he may interpret. Now this is a bit of wisdom here, a little bit of higher wisdom. To, To us Pentecostals who can pray in tongues at will, it's also a revelation here. A person that can pray, speak in tongues can also pray for the interpretation so that he will know what God is giving him to say. Now, when I pray in the Spirit, and uh, I pray in the Spirit in tongues often, daily, sometimes hours a day, it, it is one of, my, one of the things I love to do. And it bypasses my intellect. In my mind, I may be fearful. I may uh, wonder when the next sale is going to be, or when when I'm going to be able to get another dollar, or, or uh, you know, if if what, another prayer is going to be answered. I may be worried or uh, upset, or all the things that I shouldn't be. But I pray in tongues, and it bypasses all of this garbage I have in my mind, all the doubt and unbelief, all the worry, all the things I that I think I know to be true but are not true, and the things that are uh, uh, right, and I don't understand them or comprehend them. You know, uh, all these things are being bypassed, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to my spirit, and He just gives me the words to say, and I say them out. And when I, when you hear and understand the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you learn more and more how to hear that voice and 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 listen to that voice, you 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 just by by uh, this practice. You, you are able to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. You can, you can pray, and, and I, I encourage you to pray and ask the Lord to give you an interpretation. And you speak out a few words in the Spirit, and then you speak out a few words in your understanding. And if, if you are hearing the voice of the Lord and not your voice or the enemy's voice, and, and that's, that's the act of faith, you have to learn the difference. Uh, if you're hearing the voice of the Lord, the interpretation will come, and it will glorify and edify God. It will not be, it will not be fearful to you. you. He will not be telling you you're going to die tomorrow, or you know the terrible things are going to happen. That would be either the enemy or your fears manifesting. But um, th- there, there are things in the Spirit that revelation in the Spirit that He will edify you personally, because He's given you interpretation of the things that He's, that he's telling you in the Spirit. And God loves you, and, and He wants to bypass your brain. You know, when we teach, when he, we teach a little baby, say a, a eight, ten, twelve month old baby, we're saying, "Say, Daddy." We we want him to, we want him to speak the language that we speak. And I think the Heavenly Father has given us a wonderful gift that will bypass our intellect to speak the language that He speaks, the, the language of faith and love and adoration, the, 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 not the language of fear and doubt and unbelief. 
And back to verse uh, 13 again. Uh, Wherefore, let him speaketh in a nung nung tongue, pray that he may interpret. Now, this is also in the church. Uh, The interpretation can be in the church. Now, my point is, as a pastor, if someone stands up with a message in tongues, and he speaks out the message in tongues, either he's, he is, he, he can interpret himself. He can pray and interpret that, that message himself. And it will be a blessing. <clears throat> or the, he, he stood up and, and, uh, at the Lord's leading and someone else has the interpretation. Now, they, <clears throat> they may or may not stand up, but someone else has the interpretation of that message. And if they do, then fine. And, and you, ha- you have that ability for one to stand up and someone else to stand up and, and have the interpretation, and that's a message to the church. Well, it's, it's also, there is a, a source of confusion on that because there's a lot of attack and uh, things that uh, are going on that the Apostle Paul is saying, you know, Unless you, you have someone speaking a message and with an interpreter present, then it shouldn't be done. Then prophesy should, prophecy should be uh, w- what is manifested. And um, you can also pray for prophecy, but this, this word is not on prophecy today. In verse 15, what is it then? I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray in my understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing in my understanding also. Now this is this is a, a uh, act of the will of apostle. He's explaining that if you you pray in your tongues in, in tongues at your own will, and you sing in tongues at your own will, just like you pray in your understanding at your own will, and you sing in uh, uh, tongues at your own will. So you can more or less decide. Say, I will pray in tongues. Or you can decide, I was singing tongues. And I will not give an example of uh, singing in my understanding. <laughs> but uh, as you know, I can pray in my understanding or sing in my understanding. And I can pray in the Spirit or I can sing in the Spirit. And the Apostle Paul is, is saying, you know, you can do these things that you had, it's at your own will. But he wants a common sense in practice in the church. Uh, apparently, we are not to stand up in church as, a, as speakers. And I'm not talking about worshipers worshiping in the Spirit. I'm, as speakers, we're not to stand up in the church and just start speaking in tongues. The whole church is going to sit there and play their video games or, or whatever, draw a little bit of tic-tac-toe on their books. They're not going to be edified. But, and uh, they'll be bored stiff. I will be edified, even as foolish as it is. I would be edified if I did that. But the church would not. Uh, and that may, have been a, that may have been a problem that he was trying to deal with uh, when, he, when he was talking to the church at Corinth. It, I don't think that's written that it was, but that seems to be the problem. At verse 16, else, verse Corinthians uh, 14, verse 16, else when you shall bless in the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen and thy giving of thanks, it is seeing that he understandeth not what thou sayest. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. In other words, you give in thanks and praise and worship in tongues as well. But nobody's edified but you at that point. I thank God, verse 18, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. So the Apostle Paul was definitely in favor of speaking tongues. And he thanks God for the gift. He says, Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding that my voice might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Now, I think that verse is extremely obvious. The Apostle Paul says the proper time and place for for speaking to the church in tongues is is uh, only when you have an interpreter. Otherwise, speak in your understanding. Now, the, to outlaw the, to outlaw the Christians, some denominations outlaw Christians from speaking in other terms is is a disaster. 
<laughs> the, the Apostle Paul says, uh, I speak with tongues more than you all, but yet in the church I would rather speak by words of my understanding than uh, by my voice I might teach others than 10,000 words in an unknown, unknown tongue. Verse 20, Brother, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be ye men. Uh, now, verse 21 He's explaining the, the uh, a manifestation of the sign gift. We were just talking about the prayer gift and the message gift. And now this, this manifestation is the sign gift. It's the same tongue, same Holy Spirit, same gift, but it's manifested as a sign rather than a, a prayer or a message. In verse uh, 21 it says, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will... <coughs> Yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. This refers to the manifestation of the sign gift in Acts chapter 2. In the Old Testament where the Lord said that uh, He would speak to these His people, the Jewish people, with stammering lips and that they would not understand Him. And the 120 in the upper room was speaking in other tongues. And then verse uh, 22, it says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but for them that believeth not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but them that believe. Now he's dis distinctly talking about prophecy is for the church, but the sign gift of tongues, where you're, you're speaking out in, in tongues, uh, 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 speaking like the, in the second chapter of Acts 120, when those unbelievers, the Jewish unbelievers at that time, needed to hear tongues as a sign to them, but the Old Testament said they would not understand it. It was they had to understand that the that was a manifestation of the prophecy God gave them in the Old Testament. And the Apostle Peter stood up and said, This is this is not these people are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what Joel said, In the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and you the old men to dream dreams, and the young men uh, will um, um, prophesy and so on. Um, I misquoted that, but verse 23, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there came in uh, those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say you're mad? <laughs> now, we're not, we're, not, we're not trying to force people to pray in tongues, or sing in tongues, or speak in tongues. The proper time and place, like the Apostle Paul is saying over and over and over again, the proper time and place is not uh, to, to speak out as a message. Now, we're not talking about praying in the Spirit under your breath and so on, but to speak out as a message in church is not, is, is, is not right unless you have an interpretation, interpreter. 24, but all, if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or uh, one unlearned, he is convicted of all. He is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. So falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Verse 26. How, how is it then, brethren, if you, when you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Now he said, have a tongue. As part of those messages, Lord, send in the message, you have a tongue, and have a interpretation, so on. Uh, verse 27, If any man speaketh in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three, and at most three, and that by course, and let one interpret. And if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. So, over and over again, apostles say, and let everything be done decently in order. Uh, no need to repeat all of that. Verse 29, let the prophets speak by two or three and then uh, the other judge. So even uh, as, it's, as it's written, prophecy is subject to the spirit of the prophet. So we have to judge prophecy like we judge the tongues. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let him first hold his peace. Yet, uh, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. And if the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. What he's saying here is, is even the prophets, uh, the, when God gives you a prophecy, he don't, he don't 
force your mouth to move. You, it gives you a prophecy. You speak it out at the proper time and let everything be done decently in order. Uh, it says, Let your women keep silence in the church, for it is not permitted uh, uh, unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, we, we can't address that at this point. Uh, verse 36, what came, uh, what came the word of God out of you, or came it unto you only? If any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak in tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. This is, this is, over and over again, this is what the Apostle Paul is, is telling us. Let all things be done decently in order. Don't forbid the speaking in other tongues. There's a time and place for speaking in tongues. It is a wonderful gift. Some people call it the lesser of gifts. Well, I'll tell you what. The lesser of a gift from God is absolutely, fantastically awesome. And the Scripture doesn't say it's the lesser of gifts. It just says that, the Apostle Paul says that prophecy is greater. You know, uh, the, the, a sovereign God of this universe, the Almighty God, is speaking to your spirit in, in words that are just wonderful, bypassing our brain or our intellect for a purpose. What is God's purpose? His purpose is love, to build you up. And, and it's dynamic. It's, ma- it's fantastic. There, there's nothing like it. And you hear and understand the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're practicing this. So, child of God, uh, covet praying in tongues. Pray in tongues all you want, all you can. And if you'd like, I'll pray with you for that, for that gift of uh, praying in tongues. I uh, hope you'll uh, check my other messages. God bless you. Goodbye.